Hello, what is up guys? Evil Lewis Arm here today, back with another Black Desert video. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a crash course on cooking for beginner to intermediate players in Black Desert who wanna start making that AFK money, Imperial boxes, all those different types of things that you can do with cooking, show you how to do it, how to get started, how to min-max it, how to do all of those important questions that you're probably thinking of, with the usual easy to follow format from an Evil Lewis Arm guide. Now back in 2020, almost two years ago, I put out my first guide to cooking and a lot has changed since then, so I wanted to make sure to remake this one first so that you guys have the most up-to-date content. But I'll be going through a bunch of other life skills as well here in the coming weeks. I wanted to make sure to start with cooking because I think cooking is the most important life skill in Black Desert. I think everybody should do it. Even if you're a full-on grinder and hate life skilling, this is definitely the only one you want to make sure you do. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So cooking can be broken down into three categories, three major categories, right? You can do cooking for Imperial turn-ins, which can net you like 80 to 100 million silver per day whenever you just log into the game for five minutes worth of work at the later stages of cooking. You can also do cooking for making profit. So you can do like AFK cooking of recipes like King of Jungle Hamburgs, uh, scorpions, uh, snakes, those types of recipes. Cook them AFK, go walk around your house, do something, brush your teeth, do your homework, I don't know, and come back and make a couple hundred million silver an hour. Of course, this has several caveats and we'll get into those. Or you can cook for contribution EXP, so these points up here in the top of your screen. You can do AFK cooking for tons of contribution points. At the higher stages of cooking, it is actually the best way in the game to get contribution points, even better than doing tons of quests. So this is why I think that cooking is the most important life skill, right? You can make like 500 million silver a week for doing absolutely nothing like I'm going to after I'm done recording this video. You can combine it with other life skills like gathering or through a node network that you might have set up around your map, gathering all sorts of nodes and cooking resources to make recipes and blah, 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 to make tons of money from that. Or you can do it to power level your contribution points so that you can make more money from cooking, your node empires, more free storage. It's really the best life skill and has so many different applications. There is no other activity you can do in Black Desert that allows you to accomplish so many things at once. So hopefully I've sold you on why you should get into cooking. If I haven't, then I guess quit off the video. But if I have, I'm going to break this down into chapters throughout. You can skip through stuff you already know and all that typical stuff that you see on YouTube videos these days. But anyway, let's start off with the basic stuff here. Like, I have no idea what cooking is, Levi. Please teach me. Bah. So we're going to show you how to buy a house, set up a cooking utensil, where to get cooking utensils, all that sort of crap here. Let's go. All right, so in order to do any cooking in Black Desert, you need to have a home. If you don't have a home, it's super easy to get one. All you need are some level of contribution points available, at least one contribution point available. It's this little number in the top corner of your screen. Press the M key on the keyboard to open up the map, and then select the city you want to live in. Levi, what city should I live in? I'm going to give you the super TLDR version of this. You're going to want to live in either Heidel, because it's a super central location with access to pretty much every single thing in the game except for a fruit vendor. Calpheon, because it's a super central location with pretty much access to everything, including a fruit vendor, but a little bit further from other locations. Or, I'm going to give you the sleeper pick, Odraxia, because it has a fruit vendor, and has the most storage in the game for the cheapest amount of contribution points. But it's basically the equivalent of living on a remote island in the middle of the ocean. So after you've decided which city you're going to live in, go ahead and select the city on the map. In this case, we're going to take a look at Heidel, and you'll see a bunch of houses. You can pick any house that you haven't already purchased, including ones that you can't actually purchase. So all you got to do is pick your favorite house. I guess I'm going to just pick Heidel 1-4 here. You're going to see a series of purchase information. What you want to do is select the residence option, and you'll see it'll allow you to purchase the residence. All you got to do is click this button. Make sure you are buying the house as a residence. I already have a residence here in Heidel, which is Heidel 1-1. So that's what I'm going to use for the rest of this video. The next thing you're going to need to do is get a cooking utensil. When you are first starting out in cooking, the easiest way to get started is going to be to buy the base generic crappy one from a cook NPC. To do that, use the find NPC function, look for a cooking NPC by selecting this box right here, and the map will automatically path you to the closest one. You can see he's got a big marker above his head now. When you talk to this NPC, he's going to have a shop option. This is the NPC that you buy the majority of your base cooking ingredients from, so make sure you remember where he is in your city of choice. And he'll also sell you a cooking utensil. Don't buy this one. Do not buy it. It's a bait. Not worth it. Just buy the generic regular cooking utensil. After you have the cooking utensil in your inventory, you can leave his location and go to your house that you just bought. So like I said, I picked up Heidel 1-1 earlier. And you can now begin to place furniture inside of this house. Super straightforward. All you got to do is select the place mode button that is in the top center of the screen. Select the cooking utensil from your inventory over here on the right side and drop it anywhere that it'll fit. So I guess I could squeeze one in right there. You get the idea. In order to use a cooking utensil and actually start cooking, all you gotta do is walk up to it and press the R key on the keyboard, and you'll see the cooking interface. We'll go through this in a little bit in the video, but just wanna show you how to access it. 
Now you're gonna quickly learn that this base cooking utensil is pretty crappy and you're gonna to wanna to upgrade it. And in order to do that, you're gonna need one of two items. The first item are Dark Spirits Greeds that you pick up from your various boss activities that you do in Black Desert. Or the second option are Imperial Cuisine Seals that you're gonna pick up from doing Imperial Turn-Ins that we'll also cover later in this video. You can take 500 of these seals over to the NPC Pathfinder located in Heidel. And if you're wondering where Pathfinder is, they are right here on the map. It's this NPC right here, the Imperial Crafting Delivery Person directly across from the storage over here in Heidel. So 500 seals to them will give you the best cooking utensil in the game, or 15 of these Dark Spirits Greeds. The Dark Spirits Greeds can be exchanged with the NPC Crewhorn Wormsbane, who's located right here in Heidel. So right here, he's the skill instructor of Heidel. If you go up to this NPC, click on the Exchange tab and scroll down the list, you should see the Supreme Cooking Utensil. This is the best utensil in the game. Now one more thing about cooking utensils is as you use them their durability will decrease. When their durability has reached zero you will need to replace that tool by purchasing another one or you can take a copy of these supreme cooking utensils that I just showed you how to get. Take a copy of one over to the NPC that is a cook NPC. So the NPC here in Heidel once again is right here. Talk to him, click on the exchange tab, and you can exchange the cooking utensil for a repair tool. If you have a repair tool in your inventory for the correct cooking utensil, if you go up to it, you'll see a repair icon option that you can press. Make sure to use it once the tool reaches zero durability because it consumes the tool and it'd be a waste if you didn't wait until zero durability. But that's basically it as far as setting up a house for cooking. Now let's take a look at the gear you're going to need for cooking because just like every life skill, cooking has its own unique set of gear and blah, 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 blah. Let's go. So if we were talking about combat gear, you have two main stats. You have your AP and DP. Cooking is exactly the same, you have two main stats, that is your cook time and your mastery. Cook time is the easy one to explain, it's just the amount of time it takes for you to cook a recipe. Mastery is a bit more convoluted. If you press the P key on the keyboard, it'll open up the My Information tab. Click on the fish with a pickaxe driving through its brain, you will see the Mastery tab. This tab shows all of your life skills mastery, we're specifically looking at cooking for this video, but this is where you get to it. Every 50 levels of mastery that you get will move you up a bracket in the cooking skill. You gain 5 to 10 per actual rank in cooking, depending on the rank, and the rest is going to come from your gear that you equip, and we'll go through gear here in a second. But just to cover what this mastery actually does, it has a ton of different effects. The first effect is that more mastery is going to increase the chance of you getting the max number of recipes whenever you cook. So what does that mean? Just like any other activity in Black Desert, cooking has RNG to it, you'll get a range of recipes, and there's also low grade and high grade versions of recipes, Increasing your cooking mastery basically just increases the chances of all of those things being on the better side of recipes. Then beyond that, there are two additional impacts, one of which is called mass cooking. Basically, whenever you're cooking a recipe, there is a fixed chance that you will cook 10 of that recipe instead of one. Cuts down your cooking time by a ton, increases your silver power, blah, 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 blah. And the final option is specifically tied into Imperial turn-ins. It increases the value of any Imperial turn-in box you go to sell. The website Grumpy Green has a table breaking down your mastery versus each of these percentages. It's a great website with tons of resources for Black Desert. Totally recommend checking it out. But this table specifically will help you to see all these different percentages if you're interested, linked down in the description below. So that's cook time, that's mastery. How do we impact both of these things? Let's start off with cook time. So cooking time starts off at a base of 10 seconds. It'll take you 10 seconds to make a recipe. This can be reduced all the way down to one second depending on the gear you use. The first stop in improving this is generally the silver embroidered cook's clothes for most people. These go all the way from base to plus 5, reducing all the way from 1 second to 7 seconds off of the total cook time. Obviously this is a lot of money to spend, you'll need to pick one that makes financial sense to your own current playstyle. I'm not going to come out here and tell you to buy the plus 5 one, alright? Pick something to start, you can always upgrade it as you go, and as you see how much money you're making from this, you can choose to upgrade whenever you want. Just know that this is the first stop, personally I use a plus 3. The next stop that people usually go for are going to be a Spirit Stone. These can be farmed at Polly's Forest. They used to be in the market really easily, but now they're all sold out. But yeah, they take off 1.1 second from your overall cook time. If you're a big spender, you can also pick up a Khan's Heart, or even one of the different varieties of Alchemy Stone of Life. But you're going to want to find one of these Alchemy Stones to get started. Like I said, if you're just getting started, start off with the Polly's Forest one. It's a good way to get going. After that, we're going to get some more time reduction from our cooking tool. So the one that we bought over here in Heidel with Dark Spirits Greeds, the Supreme Cooking Utensil, reduces the cook time by one second on its own. So it has the most durability and reduces by one second, that's why it is by far the best tool in the game. However, you can also craft advanced cooking utensils, which will reduce the cooking time by one second as well, however they only have 900 durability. So those are the basic like fixed items that you can buy in game, the next things we have are consumables. 
And the first one you're going to want to look at is a seafood crown meal. These are pretty cheap off of the central marketplace. They give you two hours of a 0.6 second reduction to the time it takes to cook. Plus, it gives you some extra weight capacity for more cooking. Life skill mastery, which is one of the biggest things we were talking about a few minutes ago. And we will be talking about here again in a few seconds. As well as bonus EXP. So all in all, great all-around buff. The second consumable that most people are going to run are going to be the Verdure Drafts. These reduce the cooking time by one second, also give you 20% life EXP bonus. And a 200 LT weight increase, which once again allows you to have more stuff in your inventory and do more cooking. And the last one I want to bring up is the cash shop item that I am currently wearing. I hate bringing up cash shop stuff. I really don't like doing it, but it is there. And if I don't mention it, somebody will flame me in the comments. Under the apparel section for your character, you can find the outfit. It is the canopy set right here. This outfit set right here. This outfit will reduce two seconds off of your cooking time. So you're going to want to find some combination of those different items that will get you to that one second cooking. Next up, let's talk about mastery. And mastery is broken down into the six accessory slots, as well as the armor body slot. There are three tiers of life skill gear, the logia tier, the blue tier, and the manos tier. Now, all of these accessories, as well as the cook's clothes in this case, provide you mastery. Do note that you cannot wear the Logia Cook's Clothes, say, along with the Silver Embroidered. It's one or the other. For this reason, most people will use the Silver Embroidered clothes when they're cooking to reduce the cooking time as low as it'll go, so they can cook faster and get more EXP or make more meals or whatever they're trying to do. And then when they go to do their Imperial turn-ins, they'll put on the Mastery Clothing piece in order to maximize their profit from the sales. This isn't a hard, fast rule. Like, if you're doing a long session of AFK overnight cooking and you don't care, you want to get more procs because you want to make more money from that because time doesn't matter, so you use the mastery clothing instead. Once again, few and far between, generally speaking, when you are cooking, you're going to want to use silver embroidered, and when you are going to sell, you want to use the mastery clothes, whether it's Logia, the Rorju in the case of this, or Manos clothings. As far as which one you want to buy, this once again entirely depends on your financial situation. I'd encourage you to buy cheap to start out, See how much money you make and then see how much money you get back from it and how long it would take to pay off stuff and blah, 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 blah. The accessories can really start to get crazy expensive. And it gets even crazier when you jump from like Logia, Pen Logia, which gives you 50 life skill mastery, to say try Manos for another 2 billion silver just to get another 15 mastery. It gets really expensive really fast. And that's why I really encourage players to get started with it, see how much money you're making from it, and decide how much you really want to invest into it. When we get into actually showing recipes and stuff, you're going to see some calculators. They'll show you your silver per hour with different masteries, different setups, different cook times. You'll be able to mess around with those calculators and figure out how much money you want to spend. So just hold on a little bit longer. This is a long video, I know. I just want you to know that this is where you're going to go to find all these different accessories. These are the tiers. And the blue tier is Jeranoa Accessories and Rora Juice Cooks Clothes. So those are the tiers. If you want to know my personal setup that I'm rocking right now, I use the Tet Roar Juice Cook's Clothes, as well as the Tri Silver Embroidered Clothes, and then a set of Tri Manos Accessories to get me to 1300 Mastery at my rank. Alright, so we got our gear, we've got a house, now let's start talking about getting actual resources to go ahead and start cooking. Many resources can be bought off the central market. There's a ton of different items for recipes, and we'll look at recipes in a second. You can buy a ton of it off the market. There are some bottlenecks though, those are usually the proteins. Lots of meats are out of stock. Like one of the most profitable recipes is King of Jungle Hamburg that uses lion meat. If we go ahead and search this one up on the market, you'll see that there's over 1 million pre-orders on the NA marketplace, right? So the meat is a bottleneck for a lot of recipes, you'll have to gather those. Beyond the central marketplace, a lot of resources can be obtained from the generic chef NPCs in the game. We already visited the one in Heidel, the one in Odraxia is located right here. If you talk to them, like I said before, a lot of these ingredients are purchased here. So a lot of the base generic stupid ingredients are bought right here. Another subset of resources can be brought in from various node networks. If you have no idea how node networks work, that evil do us harm guy, you know, this one that you're watching right now, has multiple guides on node networks and there's more than just those two. I just got lazy and stopped searching after it. Yeah, I, I just typed in worker on my page and just looked and, ah, oh, sick, no tracking spreadsheet to track all this stuff. Yeah, that evil do us harm guy is stacked with guides. The next ingredient you might find it hard to find, especially with some of the initial starting recipes, are going to be various fruits and vegetables. And fortunately, there is an NPC that sells these, so you don't have to rely on other players. This NPC is called a fruit vendor. There are three of them in the game. There's one also in Camasylvia, but the one out here in Odrax where I'm at is the one we're going to go visit right now. And if you talk to this NPC and click on their shop, they will sell strawberries, which is the go-to fruit. It's the cheapest one in the game. So if you ever see a recipe that uses a fruit, strawberry, 
as well as paprika, which is the go-to vegetable because once again, you can just buy it from this vendor. So paprika is a vegetable, strawberry is your fruit for any recipes that you see. So once again, that's the fruit vendor, just search NPC for fruit vendor. Now there are some recipes that are gonna call for specific like seasonings, something like pepper is always a bottleneck. For these resources, you're gonna to have to grow them yourself in a garden. So right now my garden is growing a bunch of barley, and guess what, if you don't know how to do uh, farming in Black Desert, um, haha, <laughs> sick, that Evil Duos Arm guy has a guide on it. I'm actually gonna be remastering this one, so still mostly accurate, can get you started, but it is on my list of ones to redo. Anyway, you're gonna to need to grow a garden, set up some gardens, and get going with that. And I guess this is as good as time as any to point this out, but if a recipe calls for like pepper, this white rarity pepper right here, you can also use high quality or special pepper in that recipe. These have an exchange rate between them. Five regular peppers is equivalent to a special pepper. Three regular peppers is equivalent to a high quality pepper. So there's an exchange rate between those ingredients. It's one to three to five. If a recipe only calls for one basic white pepper, you can also just use one special pepper, but you are way overpaying and losing out on that money for that cook. Financial considerations you should have when you're doing your cooking. I'll probably bring this up again when we get into actual cooking, but hey, maybe I won't, who knows? And I guess while we're at it talking about weird interactions in cooking, the dough one has its own unique craziness. If a recipe calls for a dough in it, don't use wheat dough. You can use half as many of either barley, potato, sweet potato, or corn dough. You can see that they're all pretty much the same price, so this saves you money for like no reason whatsoever. I don't understand it. But you don't have to, just know that it works. So like if a recipe calls for three wheat dough, you can use two barley dough. You have to round up. But if the recipe called for four wheat dough, you could use two barley dough. So yeah, another stupid weird interaction. All right, so are you bored yet? Ready to start learning about cooking? Well, finally, let's get into that portion. So every single recipe in Black Desert has a set EXP value. As you cook the recipe, you gain EXP. That EXP is multiplied by whatever multipliers you have active. So like we said earlier, the cron meal gives you 10%, further draft is 20%, accessories have percentages, your pets have percentages that they can roll, all sorts of different multipliers and stuff on gear, buffs, things like that. Those all multiply that recipe and it gets added into your skill EXP here, which ultimately levels up your mastery, which lets you make more money from cooking, blah, 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 blah. Also leveling up your mastery to different ranks allows you to turn in more expensive cooking boxes and make more money from that. So leveling up your cooking is good. When you're first starting out, nothing to worry about, but as you continue to try and power level, you wanna look at the EXP value for different meals. Once again, I'll show calculators for all of this, but just something to keep in mind. Now, as a new player, the easiest way to get started with cooking is gonna be through pickled vegetables or through vinegar if you didn't follow my leveling guide. Because one of the quests at the Matcha Outpost in the leveling guide, the 60 to 61 episode, actually gets you to the point where you can make pickled vegetables. Don't know why, but hey. If you didn't do that though, you're gonna have to start off with vinegar. Which is gonna be our introduction to the website that you're gonna to wanna to bookmark if you do anything life skilling related, but especially cooking and I guess alchemy too. And that is Bediolytics. It'll be in the description down below. This website is by far the best. The first thing you need to do is go to the settings tab down here on the left side and input your character's stats. So remember that cooking time that we had earlier that we were talking about? You're gonna put that number in there. For me, it's 1.2 seconds. You're gonna put in your speed cooking mastery, which is your mastery when wearing the silver embroidered clothes. You'll then put in your slow cooking mastery, which is your mastery when you're wearing the Logia, Roar Juice, or Manos clothes. You'll need to fill out this information right here for the start of the cooking information. After you've done that, you can head over to the cooking tab on the left side over here, click on the market cooking option, and we are going to search for the recipe vinegar. Clicking on that will bring you over to the recipe page and you will see the different items that you will need for this recipe. Let's just go ahead and say we're gonna craft a thousand of them and it'll tell you all the ingredients you need to get. So it'll put up the recipes and it'll also pull the prices from your region. If it's not pulling the prices from your region, you need to pick your server region in the top corner of the screen up here. But anyway, on the NA region, the cheapest ingredients to buy are going to be sweet potatoes, strawberries, leavening agents, and sugar. So let's start off by buying these sweet potatoes off the market. We're going to need 10 of these. I then need to get 10 strawberries. And if you remember from where we were talking about where to buy stuff, that's gonna be from a fruit vendor. So I gotta take a trip back to that fruit vendor. So at the fruit vendor, just go ahead and approach them, click on the shop option and buy 10 of these strawberries. The next two ingredients that I need to pick up are going to be leavening agents and sugar. And if you remember those, those are both bought from the cook NPC. So use the find NPC function and look for the cooking NPC, and that'll path you to the closest one of those. Click on the shop function. We needed to buy 10 leavening agents, which are available right here, and 10 sugars, which are right here. Buy multiple, buy 10. 
After we have the ingredients, we can head on over into the cooking utensil, which for me is right across the street over here. So if we go up to the cooking utensil and press the R key on the keyboard, we'll be back at the cooking UI we looked at earlier. Once you've learned a recipe and made it at least once, you can quick access it and select a pre-made setup here that you've previously done that was successful. But since we're new and we're just starting out, we're going to do this manually. What you need to do is put the recipe for one cook of this in here. So go back to the website here, Videolytics, and make sure you put in the recipe for one craft. So if you change the craft quantity to one, it's one sweet potato, one strawberry, and one leavening agent, and one sugar. If the recipe calls for like two of something, put two in, but make sure you're only doing one craft's worth of ingredients. So we're gonna go ahead and do this now. We'll put in one strawberry, one of the sugars, one of the leavening agents, and one of the sweet potatoes. Then what you do is hit batch production. So you see, you'll get a little notice telling you to only put one batch in, only do one. So after you've only made sure that you've only put in one, hit yes, and then it'll tell you how many would you like to make, and the answer here is 10. So that's how you do it. You put in enough for one, and then type in how many you wanna make here. So we'll go ahead and make 10 cooks of this. And once that's done, you'll have the vinegar in your inventory. So I made 20 vinegars out of that, pretty cool. So how many times do I have to do that, Levi? Well, you're gonna to wanna to make vinegars up until you get to about skill nine for the cooking stat. So how do you figure out how many you have to do? You use that same website, Videolytics. So we were just on the market cooking tab here and we were making vinegar. If you go back to the cooking tab and click on cooking EXP, you can select the vinegar recipe from the drop down here. You started at beginner one. We wanna to get to skilled nine, 1%. This stuff will automatically update from that settings tab. And then all you have to do is select which buffs you have active. So remember when I was talking about EXP buffs for cooking, I didn't go into too much detail on that because they're all listed right here. These are all the different buffs that you can get for cooking. And it even tells you the percent increase from them. So what this is gonna tell you is how many times you need to make this recipe. So in this case, to go from beginner one to skilled nine, you need to buy ingredients for 1,203 crafts. So then what you do is go back into the market cooking tab, go back to the vinegar, and you need to do 1,203 crafts in order to reach that level that we wanna hit. And yeah, it's that simple. Just go ahead and buy the ingredients here that we see that we need. Go back to that cooking utensil and start cooking. Now, once you've hit skilled nine, you're gonna to wanna to move on into the pickled vegetables recipe. So once again, just search for it here on the Bediolytics website and pulled up the recipe. Now, pickled vegetables is probably going to be the only thing you make for the rest of your life. Not really, but you're gonna make a lot of these. Pickled vegetables is actually one of the most profitable imperial recipes in the game all the way up until you reach the guru stat of life skilling. There's a few at the higher ends of it that end up being a little bit more profitable, but for how easy it is to make pickled vegetables, which is just combining that vinegar that you just made with paprika bought from that fruit vendor NPC and some more leavening agent and sugar. It's such an easy recipe. It's so easy. It's so easy and it provides you a ton of silver from your Imperial turn-ins at earlier stages. You are going to need to make pickled vegetables at least until you hit the professional status which we can go to the cooking EXP tab here, change this beginner one over to skilled nine, which is where we're at now. And we need to get over into the professional stage of professional one. We're gonna be doing it with pickled vegetables and you'll see that all you have to do is make another 140 with this setup of EXP bonuses. So it takes like no time whatsoever. Now you're gonna to wanna to make a lot more of those though, because we're gonna be turning them into our first Imperial box. So in my inventory, I have 192 pickled vegetables. I made a bunch of them from that recipe that we just showed on screen a second ago, doing the exact same method of putting them into the UI for cooking. What I wanna do now is turn them into an Imperial box. And in order to do that, I need to press the L key on the keyboard, head over to the Imperial Cuisine tab, right click on the recipe and hit the start button. You will need to be at least professional ranked in order to make this box. So don't try to do this until you've hit the professional rank for your life skill here. So go ahead and hit the start button, and then your character will begin to package the recipe into a box. Once you have the box in your inventory, you can then take that to a turn in NPC. Where are these turn in NPCs? They're at most of the major cities, except for Velia for a strange reason. So Imperial turn ins are available in the cities of Odraxia, Grana, Calfion, Duvenkroon, Heidel, Olvia, Altanova, and Valencia. But what you do is take that box up to the NPC, who in this case in Odraxi is located right around the corner, talk to them, click on the Imperial Crafting tab, and hit the Sell button up here. Do note that before you hit the Sell button, you wanna make sure that your mastery is at its maximum value, which for me would be 1300. So I actually have the wrong outfit on, just a good sanity check to make sure that you're not wearing the wrong piece of gear. So now if I go back and check it, I'm wearing 1300. 
Go ahead and talk to that NPC, click on Imperial Crafting, and hit the Sell button. Now the number of boxes you can sell in a day is equivalent to your contribution points divided by two. So my contribution points are 374. 374 divided by two is going to be 187. So realistically, how much money would you make from doing 187 boxes of those pickled vegetables boxes, right? So if we go back over to the Bdolytics website and head over to the Imperial Cooking tab, we can then filter by the most profitable boxes at our various masteries. So a good like starting-ish mastery level for people at this point is probably about 350. That's about 500 million silver worth of gear and like not leveling your cooking beyond professional one. So realistically, you'll be somewhere between 350 and 400, but low side 350. As you can see, I wasn't lying to you. The most profitable box for you to make right now as a professional cook is that pickled vegetables box. And you're gonna make roughly 250,000 silver per box. So if we break out the calculator real quick, 250,000 times 187 is 46,750,000 silver profit per day for logging in and turning in those boxes, making those boxes and turning them in. Multiply that by seven days a week, that's an extra 327 million silver a week that you're missing out on by not having a cooking setup. Now something you might have noticed is that it took a very, very, very long time to put that box together. There's a quest line in Black Desert that you can do after you progress further in your cooking life skill as well as in your processing life skill that allows you to package these boxes 10 at a time. It takes it down from like maybe 25 minutes, 30 minutes a day of making boxes to less than five minutes. It takes me three and a half minutes to do my full set of boxes in a day. So this video is linked in the description below as well. I've already deleted the footage for this and I'm too lazy to download the YouTube video and put it into this one. But just know that that's a thing. You can basically get this down to three minutes, four minutes a day. Easy money and all you have to do is hit professional gear. Like I said, the gear to get to that mastery level is about 500 million silver, so you'll pay that gear off in 10 days of doing this. Again, I can't think of an activity that has a better return on investment. And then this all ties back into how much money do you actually want to spend as far as investing in gear. Like I said, do something that makes sense financially for you. If you know you're never going to progress any further, and you're only going to make like 55 million silver a day, probably not worth investing full on Manos gear. So once again, min-max it for yourself, don't listen to talking heads on the internet. I've given you all of the calculators you could possibly want to figure that out. Now if you're curious as to how good this can actually get, I'm up to 1300 mastery on my account here, and I make Guru cooking boxes, I do Valencia meals, so I'm making 457,000 silver per box. Multiplied by 187 is about 85 million silver a day just logging in in like 4 minutes. It's absolutely insane. So that's it as far as the Imperial turn-in side of things goes, right? That's one of the facets of cooking that I mentioned earlier. There are still two more. We have cooking for profit on the market, and then we also have cooking for contribution points. Cooking for the market is pretty much the same exact system that we've already gone through. Head on over to Bdolytics website, click on the market cooking tab, get rid of whatever filter that you put on there, and filter by silver per hour. This will get you in the ballpark to figuring out which recipes are the most profitable. The thing is with a lot of these recipes, you are going to need to do some gathering. So like I mentioned earlier on in the video, King of Jungle Hamburg is absolutely insane for profitability, right? 600 million silver per hour. The problem is, is that it needs a ton of lion meat. Lion meat is a pain in the butt to go and gather. You don't get a ton of it, and you'll probably be there forever trying to satisfy this income per hour. So let's pick a different recipe that's still pretty profitable. Let's do something like the uh, grilled scorpion recipe, sure. So... Grilled scorpion is in the same category, right? There is no scorpion meat available on the marketplace. So you're gonna have to go out and gather that yourself. But after you've gathered it yourself, you're also gonna need to get some butter, nutmeg, and hot pepper. Hot pepper falls into the category of stuff that you're gonna have to make yourself in a garden or buy off of the marketplace. You can see that there's none of it in stock, but there is the higher tiered stuff in stock here, at least on the NA marketplace. The other ingredients, nutmeg, are available on the central marketplace as well as butter. However, you could set up a node network to be gathering the nutmeg like I have set up here out of Shikatu, pulling in a ton of nutmeg into my node network. So once again, this is how node networks all apply into this and why it's important to have these set up. Now after you've got everything together and gone out gathering and whatnot, you can head over to the analytics tab to see your overall silver per hour for this attempt that you did. So while the recipe is netting you 370 million silver per hour, after you take into account how long it took you to gather all the resources or it will take you to gather everything, you're only gonna be making 217 million silver per hour. Something to keep in mind, that you have to do a lot of gathering for a lot of these different recipes, and if you wanna cook for profit, it's going to involve a lot of additional work. 
Now, if you don't want to get involved in gathering, there are some recipes that you can do just off of node networks or off of buying stuff off of the marketplace that are still profitable. You'll have to dig through this and filter through it. I'll give you an easy one that I do myself and I'll give it away because I'm that nice of a guy, but date palm wines. So date palms are obtained pretty much from node networks. If you open up my map here, you'll see that my Valencia node network is set up to bring me in a ton of date palms. So I have 4,000 in there right now. All you gotta do is get the date palm stockpiled up from a node network, buy essence of liqueur off of the marketplace when they're in stock, or you can make them yourself. It's an easy recipe. All you need is a flower, a strawberry from that vendor, and then leavening agents from another vendor, mixed in with additional sugar and leavening agents to make these suckers. And you can see it has a decent profitability, 74 million per hour, according to this website. Since we didn't have to gather any of these resources ourselves, it's pretty easy money. Do keep in mind that this picks the midpoint for the price. There's a ton of these in stock and they are selling for the lowest end possible price down here. So you're not gonna get that full price that you see, but still profitable recipe that you can run. I'd recommend not doing this one because everybody's gonna go do it after watching this video. Once again, you have all the resources you need to figure out a recipe that you can run that nobody else is running right here, filtering through these tabs and looking at the various ingredients. This is also the perfect time to reiterate using slow cooking versus fast cooking. Like I'd said earlier, if you're trying to get the maximum amount of cooks, if you're doing something overnight, something like say red sauce, let's say I was making like 10,000 of these, right? Put 10,000 in as the craft quantity. You can see the total profit from this crafting run would be 77 million if I used my speed cooking gear. But if I put that mastery clothing piece on instead of using the speed cooking clothing on, I'd make an extra 6 million silver. So if time is of no constraint, you're just running it overnight anyway, you might wanna consider using the slow cook option. Something to keep in mind, and it's just a little checkbox that you can check right there. And it's based off of your settings that you put in on the settings page. So that's pretty much all I wanna cover on market cooking. Mess around with those calculators there, figure out something that you can make that nobody else is going to. And that leaves one more thing to talk about, and that is going to be cooking for contribution EXP. Now, while you are cooking various recipes in Black Desert, you will get witches delicacies as a proc. Can't remember the number off the top of my head. I wanna say it's 2.36% chance for that to proc anytime you do any cooking regardless of your mastery or rank or anything like that, just a fixed 2.36% chance. These can be exchanged with an NPC in the city of Olvia, and if you right click on them, they will mark you to the map and where you need to go for contribution EXP. Because these drop at a fixed rate, all you wanna do is make as many things as you can at any given time. So you wanna pick a recipe you can spam that has low cost and low inventory weight because your weight limits how long you can AFK cook overnight and farm these contribution points. Some great recipes for that are red sauce, if you're gathering red meat already. Or the other two go-tos for pretty much everybody are gonna be vinegar or essence of liqueur. As you can see, these recipes are pretty cheap, pretty low weight, low intensity ones that you can use. Essence of liqueur is just three ingredients that are all pretty light. And vinegar, as we already saw, is only four ingredients. These recipes, the essence of liqueur and vinegar, are going to tend to lose you a little bit of silver, but the contribution EXP gain is usually worth it. But yeah, same scenario, if you're cooking overnight already, and you're not too concerned about the time constraint, you can slow cook it to make a little bit of extra silver. Or if you just want to hammer these out while you're watching Light and Netflix on the other monitor, feel free to hammer them out at full speed. All you're trying to do is maximize the number of cooks you do at any given time. And look guys, we've done it. We're at the bottom of the script. That's the easy thing. You can AFK it or whatever and blah, blah, blah. That's it. I read the last note. This video is insanely long. It's probably the longest video I've ever made. So I do apologize for that, but I do think I've covered pretty much everything you could want to know about cooking. If I missed something, beat me up in the comments and call me a jerk. Understand that I've intentionally left out some like really, really minor detail-y stuff that's like super in the weeds because I wanted to try and give this a general overview. If you still have questions, feel free to ask them. I do have a Discord server. It has a Black Desert section. There's FAQ sections. If you have questions, you can feel free to ask them here in my Discord server. I try to get to people in that. You can DM me on Discord. I know it always says I'm away. I'm not. I'm usually just at work, but I'll get back to these when I can. And as always, you can leave comments in the comment section down below too, guys. It's a YouTube video. I try to get back to them. There's a lot of comments, but I try to get through to them. So if you need more help, if this wasn't enough for you, do let me know. This is my first video back after having been sick for 24 days. This is my first real Black Desert video. It was exciting to make it. I'm so glad to be back. I'm so glad to be making content again. Thank you everyone who's stuck around over this last month, which is insane to think about. But thank you all so much. I really do appreciate the support, the continued support. I look forward to seeing you at future Black Desert videos. We got a Lost Art content coming out here very shortly as well. Um, the Twitch live stream channel, it's on the weekends at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Check me out over there. 
Instagrams linked somewhere around here. Just guys, I look forward to seeing you guys. Really happy to be back. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video. Peace.